Hey guys, welcome. I'm Keegan with Seared and Smoked, and today we're making a whole brisket. The whole thing. It's late at night, everybody else is in bed. I'm still up. We're gonna get it started. Go overnight into tomorrow, and it's easy, it takes a long time. Other than that, you can't mess this up. It, it really is foolproof. So, uh, if you haven't made a brisket before, this is a great recipe for you. And if you made briskets before, this is also gonna treat you right. It's gonna be another method you can use to pull out your bag of tricks when friends come over to make the perfect brisket. So, come along for the ride. Let's get it done. Oh, look at that monstrosity of beef. This is gorgeous. It started out as 17 pounds. It's probably 15 pounds now. Um, usually what I like to do is just rinse it off and then do a really nice fine tuning trim work on it. So for me, that's one of the most important parts of a brisket is getting all the excess fat off the exterior. With the exception of like about a quarter inch would be like optimal. Um, it's always tough to tell where that fat ends before you carve into some meat. So mine's a little patchy, but that's okay. Um, it's gonna turn out fabulous. You just wanna get all the excess off. And then there's a few pieces that are kind of like scallops on the sides uh, up here in the point on each side that you just wanna get as much of that excess hard fat off as you can. Um, and then generally I go fat side up. So got the sucker seasoned up with a nice Texas rub. Uh, it's really mainly salt and pepper. Beef, I don't, I don't think you can go wrong with salt and pepper on pretty much anything, but this is strong salt and pepper with a few other ingredients like ancho chili, garlic powder, onion powder, a little cayenne, a little cumin. I'll put the recipe down below for you. So looking good though. All right, let's talk about our setup. All right, so we're using green egg. We got it set at 225 using flame boss to keep temperature controlled. And what I've done is get the charcoal set up. Always build from big pieces to small pieces light it with a little tumbleweed and then I got my grill grate set up with a drip pan below and what I like to do is just put one can of beer in that that tray to get it started and then after that the brisket's going to be dripping so you don't need to add any more moisture to this it's going to be fine and the reason I have it set at 225 is that I know it can go overnight and this brisket is going to be in perfect condition in the morning when you wake up to wrap it so in this case, we're gonna use foil, but you can also use butcher paper. Uh, whatever you do, I recommend getting big, wide pieces. So we're using oversized foil you can get at like Costco, um, or if you use a butcher paper, make sure you get it nice and wide, it makes it easier to wrap. So, all right, I've got cherry wood in there already. So we're gonna put this on. It's barely gonna fit. We're gonna have to angle it in there, smash it up a little bit. Okay, it'll be fine though. Woo! All right, so this is pretty much all we need to do for the evening. Uh, I'm gonna let this ride overnight. Um, usually what I plan for is about two thirds unwrapped, about one third unwrapped of your total time. Um, so it is quarter after 10 right now. So I'm probably gonna wrap this tomorrow around eight o'clock. Um, it's a big brisket, so it's gonna, it can go a long time. If you don't wrap it, I'd expect it to take easily 16 hours at 225, probably more than that. Um, because we're wrapping it, we can speed it up dramatically towards the end. So it's going to go unwrap probably close to 10 hours or so. Um, that's what we're shooting for, but it's barbecue. Things change. It's all right. Um, we're going to wrap it in foil. So it'll be, you know, I'd say wrapped maybe three hours. We'll see. But we're ready to go for tonight. We'll check back in tomorrow morning. Only thing I'm going to do between now and tomorrow morning is add another chunk or two of cherry wood here in an hour or two just to boost up that smoke flavor. Then we're just gonna let it ride with the charcoal after that. So pretty easy. After you get the prep work done, smoking part's easy. That's the fun part, right? All right, check back in the morning. All right, we're back day two, the best day, because we get to eat this brisket fairly soon. Um, so let's talk about wrapping, decision-making, and what choices you can make right here. So right now our brisket's pretty close to 165. It's at 167. So. I usually target wrapping somewhere in like the 160, 165 range, and it seems to work out pretty good. Um, so we're gonna wrap in foil today because I'm targeting like a noon, like a lunch. So right now we're gonna wrap it. I expect this to come up to temperature pretty quickly, even with the smoker at 225. After we get it wrapped tightly in foil, it's gonna rise within a few hours, and then we can eat it any point after that. Um, 
if you're planning, let's say you got in the same situation this morning and you want to serve this for dinner, then you might only want to either wrap this in butcher paper or not wrap it at all and then let it ride. And if you don't wrap it, spritz it with a solution of like uh, water and apple cider vinegar or water and apple cider or just water, just something to keep it uh, nice and moist as it goes throughout the day. Um, so if you want to serve this later, don't wrap it or wrap it in butcher paper. That'll extend the process further. Um, if you want to make it faster, wrap it in foil, and then you can be eating in a few hours like we are today. It's a little after eight o'clock. This should be done, I would think, before 11 in the morning. We'll see just from my own memory, my own experience. And then we can let it rest a little bit and then slice it up. We're gonna make some Texas tacos with some classic white bread. Kind of reminds me of my first trip to Rudy's Barbecue in Albuquerque, New Mexico, which is really, I think, my first taste of a real Texas barbecue, even though for some, maybe that's not good barbecue. But for me, being from Iowa, I hadn't had barbecue like this in my life. So uh, this brisket reminds me of Rudy's. We actually have some Rudy's sauce. So friend Dan brought that back for me from his last trip from New Mexico. So, all right, I haven't looked at this yet. It's gonna be beautiful. Let's check it out. All right, that looks pretty damn beautiful. Uh, you can see the bark's nice and dark. It's got, you know, you can see the texture of the salt and pepper in there. And overall, just looking really good. You can see it's, sh it's definitely shrunk up quite a bit, which you would expect, and it will continue to do so even in the, under the foil. And uh, looks like it's nice and juicy. You can see a little, little puddling there, which is pretty normal. Overall though, very pleased with the way this looks at the moment. And we're gonna wrap it in foil. And what I have here is two double sheets. So I lay these out, two big sheets, and uh, we'll place the brisket in there now and get it wrapped up nice and tight and show you how I get that done. And we're keeping that side still up, haven't flipped it or anything. We'll just crimp all sides of it. And I mainly double up the foil just so I know it doesn't get punctured. And this is the heavy duty foil, the large roll, and Costco. And some people put broth and other things in their in their when they wrap, this still has enough juice in it. There's plenty of fat in here and it's not gonna dry out. This is gonna come out perfect. So put this on for a few hours more and we're gonna cook it till it gets close to 200 and that's when we'll pull it. Hey guys, welcome back. We got our brisket off the smoker. We pulled it at around 200 degrees. It just took about two and a half hours for it to reach 200 degrees from 167, I think is when I put it back on, uh, wrapped in the foil. Uh, double wrapped in foil that is and uh, so pretty quick and it's been resting for about 40 minutes We got Rudy's barbecue sauce here straight out of Albuquerque, New Mexico I think they're probably originally out of Texas. I've seen them there too, but they actually have one of my favorite barbecue sauces for brisket It's not I don't like a really really sweet sauce for brisket and this is this achieves everything there and uh, then we've got some makings for some Texas tacos for which for me is white bread some pickled peppers and a good barbecue sauce and that's all you need in my opinion for a good brisket so all right let's carefully get this out of the package and see if everything we did to this point is going to be worth it which i think it will be but let's take a peek oh sweet baby jesus that looks good nice and tender just kind of push on a little, the tip's a little firm, but all right. Now, the careful transition to the cutting board. Success, and you can save the the juice as a dipping sauce if you want. You can mix it with barbecue sauce, experiment with that. So my favorite 
tools for cutting brisket are either this slicer by Dexter or this, this is kind of a multi-purpose. I think they even might even call it like a sandwich, <laughs> a sandwich knife, but I use it for anything. This is like the best all-purpose knife, uh, in my opinion, for cutting things. So uh, you can try either of those or anything of your choice. And then we just got to get to work. So the tip's always going to be, the tip of the point is always going to be a little more on the dry side from my findings. So this is still looking really good. You got a nice smoke ring going on there. What I've also found you can do is at, after you reach as close to 200 is just set your oven to its lowest temperature and you can keep it in there wrapped in foil for hours. So and that can even increase tenderness. You just kind of let it steam a little bit in its own juices in there. So you set up like 175. And you can keep it in there for hours. So I like to slice my brisket this way until you get to a certain point here, then we'll cut the point across. Or you can even take the top half off and cut it into two pieces. Well, let's take another look at one of these. Got a decent smoke ring on there. I always find that, you know, Kamado cookers like the Big Green Egg don't always have like the largest smoke ring because they're, the reason why is they're so efficient. They don't use a ton of fuel and a ton of wood, but the flavor is still there. So pretty, pretty gorgeous piece of brisket there. Now we're getting to the more fatty sections. You might call it the more tastier section of brisket. At that point, I like to turn it around like this. And you just cut it right through. Like so. And these are the most moist, in my opinion, most delicious pieces of the brisket. You can see, nice and juicy, just delicious. And this is a prime bis brisket from Costco. Always recommend prime. Only bad experience I've ever had with a brisket is when I, I purchased a brisket that was less than prime. So that is my advice. All right, let's take a closer look at everything here. Okay, as you can see, everything looks pretty fantastic. As it's become a little more exposed, you can see the uh, smoke ring coming through a little bit more on the top of the brisket there. And Looking pretty gorgeous. All right. Now it's time for some Texas tacos. All right, the best time of the show it is taste test time in the form of Texas tacos. So I've cherry picked some of my favorite little pieces of brisket here. Try to get, I like the top of the point. That's my favorite part. So I'll take the top of the point. It's got a good amount of fat in it, but not too much. And uh, try to get pieces with a lot of bark. The bark, in my opinion, is by far the best part. All right, so we don't need to overdo it. This might be my last brisket for a while because my doctor said that my cholesterol is too high, amongst other things. Not even a joke, so I'm gonna enjoy this I'm gonna enjoy this last brisket that I might not have for a while. Finishing touches, I like to add a few pickled peppers. There's lots of varieties out there. You can choose your faves. And then just a small amount of barbecue sauce. This is a big bottle. This is getting kind of scary. There we go. And that, to me, is a Texas taco.
inspired by Rudy's Barbecue. All right, guys, it's been fun hanging with you. Brisket turned out pretty awesome. Let's give it a taste test. That's really good. It really takes me back to Rudy's. Um, I love, in my, in my rub, I love the salt and pepper. It just really comes through in the rub. The other things are like subtle hints, you know, the garlic and onion powder and things like that. But it's all about the salt and pepper rub for the Texas brisket. And then just that foil wrap just makes this the easiest brisket in the world. You can try the other, other methods as well, just letting it go unwrap or wrapped in butcher paper. And you can definitely have success too. But this one here, will take you there every time. So if you have company coming over and you're kind of worried about your results, this is always gonna turn out great for you. And like I said, you can let it rest for a long time in the oven, just at that low, like 170 degree mark. Just set your oven on the lowest setting and throw it in there and you can keep it in there for hours and then still cut it up. And, and generally, it actually gets better with age from my past findings. So I cut it up 30, 40 minutes after letting it rest today. But the, generally the, the results are even better if you let it rest, it becomes more tender. So. Do it, give it a try. Let me know what you think. If you like this video, give it a like, subscribe. We'd like to see you on the next time here at Seared and Smoked, where food always tastes better outdoors. We'll catch you next time. Thanks, guys.